What I would like to do this morning is to ask you what I think is the most important question in politics today. But before I get to it, I'd like to ask you another question. I'd just like to know where we stand. Is there anyone here today who thinks that government is too small? Would you raise your hand? I know you hate audience participation as much as I do. But just raise your hand if you think government is too small. All right. Anybody here who thinks government is about the right size today? Uh, all right. Uh, anybody here who thinks that government is too large? Is there anybody here who thinks that government is way too large? <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at that and not press my luck further. Well, I think then we could say that a central premise uh, that we all share here is that we want to see smaller government. And that is why I want to ask you the most important question in politics today. But before I do, let's define what smaller government is. Smaller government does not mean government that grows less fast than government grew last year. Smaller government doesn't mean freezing government at some level. Smaller government doesn't mean a smaller percentage of the gross national product or something else. Smaller government means government that is smaller than it is today. And during this presidential season, we have heard a lot about smaller government. We always do during election years. Politicians always run as though they were libertarians and then govern as though they were Democrats. Uh, and during the election season, they always talk to us about government being too big, taxes being too high, regulations being too oppressive. And then when you finally get down to the specifics of their program, you find out that what they're really talking about is government that may not grow quite as fast as government has been growing in the past. In fact, one of the presidential candidates who was usually tagged with the uh, label libertarian very frequently, when he finally gave his economic program for America, it was that in his second year, uh, pardon me, in the second term of office, he was going to slow the rate of growth in government to just the rate of inflation. Now, this is not what I consider smaller government. Smaller government is government that is smaller than what we have now. And because we agreed a moment ago, and I'm going to hold you to it, that government is way too large, then what we want is government that is way smaller than what we have now. That's the only logical conclusion of the premise. So that's why I want to ask this important question of you. But before I do, how small do we want government to be? Well, we could disagree about that. We could go around the room and ask people uh, what, what it is the size of government should be. How big should the federal budget be? There might be some people in this audience who would say the federal budget ought to be zero. There might be some people in this audience who, on the other hand, think that government should be as big as seven, eight, nine hundred dollars. <laughs> and believe it or not, there may be people out there in the world who think it should be even larger than that. Uh, but the fact is that we all agree on the fact that government should be a lot smaller. But if we waste our time arguing about how much smaller right now, we may get into uh, a situation where we're bogged down arguing about these details when we haven't even done anything to make government smaller. So I would like to propose that the first goal that we should shoot for is to get the federal government to abide by the Constitution, to tell the federal government that you cannot do anything that hasn't been specified in the Constitution, just the way the Ninth and Tenth Amendments say. Now, Bob Dole goes around the country saying that we have to dust off the Tenth Amendment. He reaches in his pocket, pulls out a card, and says, we need to read this Tenth Amendment and abide by it. Uh, this is not the Tenth Amendment, incidentally. This is my hotel room key. Uh, but he reads the Tenth Amendment and says we have to abide by it. But what does it mean that the, that the government should not be involved in anything that isn't in the Constitution? Everything should be reserved to the states. Well, there's nothing in the Constitution about the federal government being involved in welfare, for example. And so if you really are going to get back to the Constitution, you don't collect money from people and then block grant the money to the states for welfare. You don't have two years and you're out. You don't have workfare instead of welfare. You get the federal government completely out of welfare. If you believe, <laughs> if you believe that the government should only be involved in those things that are specified in the Constitution, you do not have the federal government involved in education. 
That doesn't mean you dismantle the Department of Education and then spread its functions around to the Commerce Department, the Labor Department, and the Health and Human Services Department, and all these other places, and continue to have the federal government telling states and local communities what kinds of, of curricula that they should have and feeding money out to them to support their school buildings and so on. You get the federal government completely out of education. Getting back to the Constitution means getting the federal government completely out of welfare, education, housing, transportation, health care, agriculture, crime control, regulation, all of these areas that it has stuck its nose into over the last 30 to 60 years. Areas in which it has made such a gigantic mess. And it has reached the point where this mess is so great that the American people are sick to death of supporting a wasteful, extravagant government at the expense of their own families. And the answer is not to block grant things to the states. It is not to reform these programs. It is not to find somebody who is better able to manage them. It is to get the federal government out of them completely, because government doesn't work. Government can't deliver the mail on time. It doesn't keep the city safe. It doesn't educate our children properly. And the answer is not to fix it, but to reduce it to the absolute minimum possible, to get it as far out of our lives as we can, to make it as irrelevant to our existence as possible. Government doesn't work. And it isn't going to do any good to continue to pretend that it does. It doesn't do any good to pretend that the war on poverty really does help poor people and that it just needs to be improved and fine-tuned. It doesn't do any good to say that the war on drugs really does reduce drug abuse, and it really does reduce crime in this country, because the fact of the matter, it doesn't, and we all know that it doesn't. We know that the emperor has no clothes. We have to get the federal government out of these areas. And until we set this as our goal, we are never going to get anywhere, and we are never going to cut a dollar from the federal budget, and we are never going to see smaller government in this country. The pundits tell us that, sure, everybody wants smaller government, but nobody wants to give up the services that government provides. Nobody wants to give up his own program. He just wants everybody else to give up their program and make government smaller. And the Republicans demonstrated this when they tried to just slow the rate of growth in Medicare and slow the rate of growth in the food, uh, school lunch program. And when they did, they ran into enormous opposition. And of course, the whole thing is described now as, well, people did want smaller government, but the Republicans went too far. Well, <laughs> if they wanted smaller government, how could the Republicans have gone too far when they were making government bigger? Uh, as a matter of fact, the budget that they passed immediately upon taking control of Congress, this great seven-year balanced budget resolution, would make the government bigger every year for the next seven years. This is not smaller government. And yet, the pundits say they went too far. They were too extreme. Well, they were too extreme uh, in one sense, and that was that they were taking away something that people thought that they would have, some people thought they would have. And those people screamed bloody murder. They raised a great hue and cry, and no one came to the defense of the Republicans. No one in the press, no one in the public came to their defense, because no one saw that his life would be improved by what they were doing. What the Republicans were doing was, was slowing the rate of growth in a few programs, <sighs> affecting a few people. And those people, of course, complained about it because there was no way that they could see that giving up whatever it was the Democrats were promising them would be offset by some gain somewhere else where they would see that their life would be improved, that their taxes would be lower, that government would get out of their life in some other area. All they were doing was giving up something that the government was promising them and getting nothing in return for it. And no one else was being promised anything. No one else could see where life was going to be any better. If the Republicans had succeeded in slowing the rate of growth of Medicare as they wanted to, would your taxes be lower? Would your life be any freer? Would government not be intruding into your bank account and rummaging around looking for evidence with which to hang you? Uh, would the EPA stop harassing your business? Would any of these things happen if the Republicans had succeeded? Of course not. So why should anyone come to their support? Why should anyone rally to their aid when they needed public support? So the question is, how are we going to cut these programs? How are we going to get people to say, yes, I agree, I do want to see these programs cut, and I will work actively to see that it takes place?
And that does finally bring me to what I think is the most important question in politics today. And that question is simply this. Would you give up your favorite federal programs if it meant you never had to pay income tax again? In other words, if you are in love with your farm subsidy, a student loan, or you just think the Corporation for Public Broadcasting is the most wonderful thing that ever happened in this country, whatever it is that you think is so great about the federal government, would you give it up if it meant you never had to pay income tax again? Because only by wrapping this together as one issue will we ever be able to show the American people what that program costs them. The cost of your favorite federal program is not 60 cents a month or uh, $12 a year per person or whatever it is that the politicians always say that this program is so inexpensive and why shouldn't we have it and so forth and so on. No. The cost of your favorite federal program is the cost of all the favorite federal programs because you cannot get what you want from the government unless everybody else gets what he wants. And the cost of that adds up to a trillion and a half dollars a year, to a five trillion dollar debt. The cost of that is what you're paying in income tax. And if you wonder what that is, if you don't know what it is, just look at your paycheck this week and see what they're taking from you in income and social security taxes. If you don't know what it is, look at your 1040 form for 1995 and see how much you paid to the federal government. That's what your student loan is costing you. That's what your farm subsidy is costing you. And so I ask you again, would you give up your favorite federal programs if it meant you never had to pay income tax again? We will never cut one dollar from the federal budget. Never. Not even one dollar from the federal budget until we wrap all of this up in one step and say we are getting the federal government out of everything at one time. Welfare, education, housing, transportation, and the whole litany of, of programs that I mentioned earlier. And at simultane uh, pardon me, simultaneously, we are going to repeal the federal income tax so that every dollar you make is going to be yours to spend, to save, to give away as you see fit. And only then will the American people rally to our cause. 